So survival of the fittest is just sort of a short phrase that describes to us to help us understand what natural selection is. And survival of the fittest means that the fittest um, organisms, the ones that have the most helpful adaptations, the ones that are, happen to be born more successful than the others, they will survive and be able to pass on their helpful traits to the next generation. We know this because offspring inherit their genes, inherit their characteristics from their parents. So, why, why are we all different from each other? So we said the other day, we obviously can look around the room, we have lots of obvious variation amongst ourselves. But so do everything else. So do um, squirrels outside. And so do robins and birch trees. Okay? And artist fungus and all other species. There is variation. We don't quite notice it as much because they're different species, but we do notice it amongst ourselves. So why, if you have a brother or sister, why do you have differences between you and them? Genetic mutation. That's one reason, but that's not the main reason you and your brother or sister are different from each other. You might have taken different cells from our parents or different traits? Yeah, you inherited, a, so we all inherit 50% of our genes from our mother and 50% from our father, everybody. The half that you happen to inherit from each parent was a different combination of the traits that your brother or your sister inherited from your parents. And so yeah, we have some similarities with our brothers and sisters, but we also have differences. Okay? And that's because we inherited different combinations of those genes. Tyler? Wasn't that also like an error in the DNA? So yeah, and that's what Sean was talking about. So Sean's talking about mutations. So sometimes, also besides this process of inheriting different combinations of traits from parents, sometimes when cells are dividing, changes happen. Changes to the DNA. Our DNA is a series of letters. Sometimes one of those letters or more than one of those letters gets switched. And that could result in a brand new characteristic that didn't exist before. So those are two reasons. So the first, sexual reproduction. The fact that species that reproduce sexually, the offspring get a combination of traits from each parent. Kind of like taking two decks of cards, taking half the cards, shuffling them together. You're going to end up with a new combination of cards every time you do that. And the other is through what Sean and Tyler were saying. Mutation. Changes to the DNA. Random changes. That's what a mutation is. And these mutations sometimes happen and it leads to no change in the organism. Sometimes that happens, it leads to some change which could be harmful, which could cause a malfunction in an individual, cause some disease, some illness. What would happen if there was a mutation that happened to cause some severe disease? Would that mutation be passed on to the next generation? No. If they survive, yeah. Not likely. If on the other side, a mutation happened and it gave the individual some characteristic that was helpful to it, would that trait likely be passed on to the next generation? Probably. Probably. Because that individual would be more likely to survive, more likely to reproduce, more likely to pass that mutation on to the next generation. So mutation is just an unplanned change in the DNA, sort of a mistake. But sometimes these mistakes lead to helpful traits. Sometimes they don't. Maybe we'll come back here. Remind me to come back here if we have time at the end, which we probably won't. All right, let's talk about some examples of natural selection of evolution characteristics. Maybe you'll bend to the Kazoo. They still have these things walking around. I haven't been there in a little while. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Peacock. It's a peacock. A peacock is a, really the generic term is a pea fowl. Here we see several pea fowl. Which one is this? The the male. Male. That's the male. That's the one we call a peacock. Okay. Um, that's the male. 
This is called the pea hen. Okay, just like in chickens. Okay, these are the chicks. So, male peacocks, or you don't even really need to say male peacock, because when you say peacock, you're talking about a male. So, the peacock has obviously some extreme uh, tail feathers. Why do they look like this? Is, are these helpful for the male to fly around? No. They're almost a hindrance to flying. They might make it more difficult even to find food and so forth. So why would they have evolved to have these elaborate tail feathers? Yes? Yes. So in reproduction in peafowl, females, the peahens, choose mates. And they choose them based on their tail feathers, the colors, the size of the tail feathers. The larger, the more colorful, the more impressive the tail, the higher the chances that male will find a mate. What happens if a peacock is born with some puny little tail feather? It's not going to impact its survival, but it will impact what? It's getting a mate. Its ability to find a mate and reproduce. And therefore, that trait would not be selected for. Okay. So the traits that are selected for are large tail feathers. Smaller tail feathers would be selected against. Sorry, hold on. Computer's lagging. Need to upgrade. Need to upgrade my video card. This is um, true for, this is, this is a special name. This is a special type of natural selection. It's called sexual selection. When mating selects for a certain characteristic. And many species you will find this is called sexual dimorphism. That males and females look different. Do you know what a male um, robin looks like? The bird? A robin. Yes. What's a male robin look like? It's probably the one you think of as a robin. They have an orange um, breast feathers, colorful. There's actually probably a, a robins that you don't notice. The female robins, kind of just brownish in color. You know what a male duck looks like? Not all of them. Yes, but not all of them. The male mallard duck is very colorful. Okay? However, female mallard ducks are just kind of brown in color. Fish, this happens. Guppies, often. Males are brightly colored. Females are just drab in color. This is because of sexual selection. So, to summarize natural selection, variations that are selected for because they're helpful become more abundant in the population. Variations selected against become rare. And so that leads to natural selection. So out of this trout that laid hundreds of thousands of eggs, which ones are going to survive? Not the ones that can adapt to the change. Remember, we need to be careful in our phraseology. The ones that are well adapted to the conditions they are in. Yes, I know you. So good. All right, this is this video. If it works, is just a little parable about when I first came. I oh, as a you made teacher. A cartoon? You made What's a that? Hit? You made a cartoon. Yeah, I made this after um, my first year here. Let's see if I can make it to work. How long ago? Just a little animation. It looks like peeps. You know nothing. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, uh, dang! It was so ago. bad they took it off. No, YouTube. it's really good. I'll tell you later. It's so old. I'll show to you some other time. All right, let's talk about Galapagos finches. Where are the Galapagos finches, students? Or where are the Galapagos islands? Oh, oh, are these just crows? No. Wait, there's in, uh, wait, 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 wait. Santiago. Santiago. Off the coast the South of South America, eastern or western coast? Western. Western, western, western coast. Western. Western. Off the western coast of Hawaii. South America, no, not quite too long, are the Galapagos islands. You can go there and visit. They limit the number of visitors that go to the Galapagos. Say it's a pretty delicate ecosystem. 
There's a, a series of small islands. Okay. And Darwin visited the Galapagos Islands on which ship? The, the HMS Beagle. Beagle. HMS Beagle. Okay. Beagle. And what he noticed, these are examples of some of the finches he saw. Now these finches, they all looked pretty similar. Their body shape and size were all very similar. However, he noticed an important difference. Their beaks. That the beaks of these finches vary from island to island. And that led Darwin to wonder, well, why do their beaks vary? Why are they different from each other? And the reason is because each island had slightly different food sources available. These finches arrived at the Galapagos Islands. They're all related, but after finches arrived from the mainland, they then split off and different finches went to different islands. And once that happened, because there were different food sources available, they all took a slightly different evolutionary path. Some finches evolved to have thick beaks. Some evolved to have thinner beaks, longer beaks sharper beaks, beaks used for grinding, for probing into trees. So the finches evolved over time because there were different food sources. Finches that lived on islands with thick seeds, with a thick coat, what do you think, ha which, what happened to their beaks over time? They became bigger, thicker, stronger, because they needed the any Finches born with thinner beaks couldn't crack through those seeds. So the ones that happened to be born with a little bit thicker beak survived better. And that process repeated generation after generation till that finch has this thick beak. This is an example of natural selection in action. Okay. In fact, there are some researchers that went to, this is just showing you what these different finches eat. Some researchers that have studied these finches for 30 or 40 years go to this island year after year. And what they saw when storms would come in or droughts and change on an island which foods were available, within a couple years they could see actual changes in the finch's beak size. They can actually record and observe evolution through natural selection taking place on the Galapagos Islands. You know, lots of times we think about evolution taking millions of years for a species to change. It doesn't have to. Sometimes it happens in a, several years. And that's been measured by scientists. Another, oh, so if you are sick, if you have a cold, if you have an ear infection, if you have strep throat, well, let's say, how many people have had strep throat sometime? I don't have strep throat. Okay. So, if you have strep throat, what does that mean? You're sick. Yeah, but what's going on in your body? You're sick. Um, sick. Wait, your throat is sick. So, what does it mean if you have strep throat? Oh, you, oh, you don't have your key? Uh, I'll be over in a minute. So, if you have strep throat, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Um, so if you have strep throat, tell me what's going on in your body. He's going to get his key. Your tonsils are Walker? Oh well. Your tonsils get larger because they're swollen. Okay. Why are your tonsils getting larger and swollen and red and achy? Because they're irritated. Why are they irritated? Because they're like bacteria. Yeah, strepto is caused by a bacteria. Streptococcus is the name of the actual bacteria that That's causes. That's the name. So streptococcus is the bacteria that causes strepto, and there are actual colonies of bacteria growing in your throat, on your tonsils, in your throat, causing it to become inflamed, okay, to hurt, damaging the cells. So when you go to the doctor and they gag you with that giant Q-tip, they culture it, they say, oh yeah, you have strep throat. Then what is the treatment? Medicine. Um, Let's be more specific. They give you a medicine called an antibiotic. An antibiotic is a medicine that kills what? Bacteria. Only bacteria. So you go home, you get your 
amoxicillin, that disgusting pink liquid, you know? Oh, so anyway, you take it for two, day, two days, and you start feeling a little bit better. Three days, you feel a lot better. Four days, you feel fine. So do you throw the rest away? No. What does the doctor always tell you when you've been prescribed an antibiotic? Take it till it's gone. Take it till it's gone. You have to take it the full 10 days if it's a 10-day antibiotic. And the reason is because of natural selection. So you take this medicine for three days, four days. The bacteria in your throat causing your infection, which ones have died off after three or four days? The ones that resist the... The weakest ones. And maybe that's most of them. And that's why you feel better. Most of the bacteria, you've killed them off with this antibiotic. However, which ones might still be in there? The stronger, the stronger ones. The ones that could withstand this chemical that you're putting on them. And if you stop taking your antibiotic and you still have some of those stronger bacteria left, what can they then start to do? Reproduce. Reproduce. And what happens to your throat? It starts to hurt again. But this time, they're stronger, and if they, you can't take amoxicillin again, okay, because the bacteria that you've allowed to remain are resistant to it. So you might have to get bumped up to a different antibiotic, the stronger one. And so that's why if you take it for a full period, 10 days, and even those strong bacteria probably are not going to be able to withstand this antibiotic for 10 days. And that's why they always tell you to finish out your prescription to make sure you destroy all those bacteria and this infection doesn't come back. Now, because we use so many antibiotics and people misuse antibiotics, there are strains of bacteria that are becoming resistant to more and more antibiotics. There are some bacteria that are sometimes called superbugs, where they are resistant to just about every antibiotic that we have. And those are very dangerous bacteria because if you get an infection, the doctors don't have any antibiotics they can give you to help you get better from them. You just have to hope your immune system can play it off. The same is tr true of pesticides, insecticides that we spray on crops to kill insects. Okay? We are encouraging them to become resistant by selecting against the weakest and allowing resistant ones to hang on. Right. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Camouflage is an excellent example of evolution through natural selection. We know many species have evolved to have camouflage. Okay? Camouflage is used sometimes to avoid predators. Other times it's used to hide until you can capture your prey. So you see this uh, spider on a dandelion? There's its uh, exoskeleton, its abdomen, and you can see its legs here. Blends in extremely well. I see the owl. What? I don't see. Oh, I see it. Oh, These are ibexes. There's actually, I think, three of them. You see all three? I see two. I see two. They live in the Middle East, dry, rocky conditions. I see two. I see three. Their coloration makes them very difficult to see. Here's one. There's a little baby one. There's another one. Oh, I see that one. Oh, I never. I didn't see that one. I'm still living one. These are peppered moths. We're going to talk more about them tomorrow. See that? There's two on each one. The dark one and the light one. Dark one and the light one. We'll talk more about why there's different colors. It's a little more. It's so okay. That's That's all yeah. it's oh, it's cool. Cool. Yeah. Imagine that thing's like pretty cool, true. right? Even, I don't see the animal here. No. You may have one at your house. Yeah, I see it. I it. Why is there a it's a cat. I see it. Oh. Where? 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 Can you find it? No. no. Is that on the next page or no? I don't have that. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right. There it is. Found it. Wait, what? Right there. Oh, there's red. Oh, I couldn't even see the red. See it now? Oh, Hard to see. Again, okay. evolved to have camouflage. Oh, I see the animal. What are we looking at? I see it. Owls. Oh, I don't know the other one. Oh, I see it. Anything here? Oh, yeah. there. Ah. <laughs> Anything there? Oh, I see it. Here is legs, two arms. Oh, I see it. Oh, I thought the legs were so. Oh, she's 
Butterfly? Yeah. I see it. Uh, I see it. I see it. All right. Now, there are also, oh, can I do have time? Maybe, maybe not. Mimicry is another really cool adaptation to talk about. Mimicry is when an organism evolves to resemble another one. Sometimes to attract prey, sometimes to discourage predators. What is this snake? Do you know? Um, a coral. It's a coral snake. It's deadly. It'll kill you if it bites you. This is another snake. You know what this is? Oh, is it saying right there? Deadly coral snake? No, no this is a deadly coral snake. snake. This is not. This is harmless. It has no poison. It's a scarlet king snake. Why has it evolved to look like this? So, like they're poisonous. so they look like they're poisonous. Because predators have evolved to not eat coral snakes. Because they're deadly. The scarlet king snake has evolved a similar coloration, but not the poison that goes along with it. And so predators will also avoid the scarlet king snake, even though it's not poisonous. There's a saying. Do you know the saying? You can tell the difference? I've heard of it, but I don't remember so, Oh. Red next to yellow, you're a dead fellow. Red next to black, you're safe, Jack. What if my name is Jack? What if my name is Jack, huh? So that's red next to black, you're safe, Jack. Red next to yellow, you're dead fellow. What if my name is Jack? What is this? Butterfly. It's a monarch butterfly. They're poisonous to birds. This is a yes. This is a viceroy butterfly, not poisonous, but they've evolved to look similar to monarchs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they have a different okay, certain plants have evolved to look like an insect. So they attract. They attract insects to um, help with pollination. Oh, okay. Come. I said thank you so much. You're so kind of us. Thomas is our You. This is what.